Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Today's topic, Advent Christian. The word Advent means the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. Now, the person who is arriving is somebody you are anticipating and you want to see. You're even longing for their arrival or their coming. The Bible speaks about the advent or the coming of the Messiah of Christ with great longing. In fact, the Bible speaks of two advents or two arrivals of the Messiah, the Christ. One was anticipated by the prophets and came about in history some 2,000 years ago. It was the incarnation of the Word. The Word became flesh. That is, the Son came from the bosom of the Father, and He took up residence here on earth as the human man, Jesus Christ. This was the arrival of the Son of God. This arrival was predicted by the Old Testament prophets hundreds of years before it took place. Listen to these verses from Jeremiah 33, verse 14. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And from Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, But you, O Bethlehem Epaphrata, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days, actually from everlasting. And from Isaiah 11, Verses 1 through 5, we have this prophet. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Now, the the stump of Jesse. Jesse was the, the father of King David. Okay, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and the faithfulness the belt of his loins. Now, many of these prophetic statements from the First Testament embrace both the first and second coming of Christ. But here we have the prophetic witness to the advent, the arrival of the Messiah. Then when we turn to the pages of the New Testament, we read in the beginning of Mark's gospel this statement. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Now, the word Lord in Isaiah is all caps, which is Y-H-W-H. That is the personal covenant name of God. Prepare the way of Yahweh. Make his path straight. In other words, Yahweh himself is coming to be among mankind. And amid all the unbelief of the people of Israel in the first century and their skepticism regarding the coming of the Messiah, there was a faithful remnant who believed the scriptures and were primed to look for the imminent appearance of the Messiah. For example, we read in Luke 2, 38 about Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. After the birth of Jesus Christ, some days later, his parents brought him into the temple in Jerusalem to be dedicated to the Lord, to Yahweh. That's about 40 days after his birth. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem, Luke 2, 38. Now, Christ Jesus accomplished this redemption by the shedding of his blood and by rising from the dead on the third day. Now, 40 days after his resurrection, Christ ascended to the throne of God the Father, and there he was crowned with glory and honor He took up his high priestly ministry for his people who continues to this very hour. And all these great things took place during Christ's advent, first advent. Now, they're the basis for his future return to complete the full deliverance of his people from the devastation of death 
the devastation of the effects of sin and the fall through the resurrection of the body and the reordering of creation and the effects of the fall being reversed and totally removed. References to the second advent, his return at the consummation of the ages are frequently mentioned in the New Testament. So the angels told the disciples when they were looking at Christ to sing into heaven, he told them, this same Jesus that you have seen go into heaven shall come in like manner back to the earth again. Now Jesus himself, during his days on earth, spoke of his return, his second advent. Listen to Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. And Jesus responded to the question of the high priest at his trial, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? He said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven, Mark 14, 62. Now he was referring, Jesus was referring to the Old Testament prophet Daniel, who wrote words anticipating Messiah's everlasting kingdom that will be established at his second advent. This is what Daniel wrote. Daniel 7, 13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. Now on the eve of his crucifixion, our Lord Jesus said to his disciples in the upper room, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The apostle of our Lord, Paul, uh, apostles of our Lord, had been instructed by Jesus and wrote of his second coming. In Hebrews 9, 28, we read, So Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Now that is an Advent scripture, if I ever heard of one. Paul in Philippians 3, 20 and 21 writes, Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. And going back for a moment to the Old Testament, we read the words of that ancient man of God named Job, who was so afflicted with these Skin balls was just destroying his life under a great and severe trial. He must have been speaking of the Messiah's second advent when he wrote these words in Job nineteen twenty three. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin is be destroyed, been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, my heart faints within me. And returning to Paul, the beloved apostle to whom the risen Lord Jesus had appeared, we read his description of the second advent of Christ at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. And it's very important. These are the words Jesus said we should use to comfort one another when a Christian dies. He's not talking about comforting with some kind of ideas about heaven now, though one who dies is with Christ. But the, the focus of the New Testament is not on the after death experience, but on the resurrection experience of the second coming of Christ. Listen to these words. I do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, 
will be caught up together within the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. And some of the most marvelous revelation of Christ's second advent are found in another of Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Read verse 51 through 54. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Well, it's gone. The church, the people of God, are rightly looking for the completion of their salvation, body, soul, mind, and spirit, when Christ returns. Listen to 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, we're God's children now, and what we shall be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. Are these words from Titus 2. Christ's return means that we redeemed sinners will be totally changed and will be like our Lord. And so we live our lives on earth now as we look to the future, as Paul writes in Titus 2.13, waiting for that blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? That is Advent expectation, waiting for the blessed hope. And again, we read in Colossians 3, 4, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And finally, the Bible ends with this great promise from the risen Christ himself. He who testifies these things says, surely I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Here's my question. Are you an Advent Christian? One who is looking for the Savior's return? with eager expectation and anticipation, longing to be with him, longing to be see him, and longing to be glorified so that you will manifest all the glory of the Savior and the holiness of that day. Let us join together in Charles Wesley's great prayer hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, Born to set thy people free from our fears and sins, release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Let us pray in the words our Lord taught his disciples to pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is an Advent Christian. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights. Until next time, lift your heads up. Look, your redemption draws near. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.